All right, so this is a suggestion via Discord. The name of the video is uh, Black Voters Set the Record Straight on Kamala Harris's Record. Uh, let's check it out. Let's see what this takes us uh, immediately. Joining us now is Stacey Washington, host of Stacey. I'll Anton Daniels, the host of the, uh, the Millionaire Morning Show. Um, he has a YouTube channel, uh, and he does this on YouTube. This is a weird crossover, bro. I mean, I respect it. Congratulations. You're on TV. Let's get it. Joining us now is Stacey Washington, host of Stacey on the Right, Sirius XM Patriot Radio, and Anton Daniels, YouTuber and content creator. Anton, let's start with you. You just went viral um, for an exchange that you had with Which a one? Kamala supporter. Let's watch. All right, let's go. Would you vote for it? Yeah. Why? I, I'm going to just be real honest with this. She's a black woman. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I'm going to just be real honest with this. She's a black woman. Is it only because she a black woman? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Do you not yeah. see the how that how that's a bad idea? No, she doesn't. No, Elaborate. no chance. We're in three proxy wars. She failed at the border. She has no policy, no record to stand on. Okay, Anton, first of all, I think I forwarded that to 20 of my friends. That was <laughs> such an awesome takedown. But tell us about that, because I saw some of the other participants like nervously drinking their Coke or whatever they were drinking. But tell us about your interactions with people who happen to be African-American who instinctively seem to go for Kamala, because it's the right thing to do. Absolutely. I think it's unfortunate because the majority of my interactions is me being looked at as the bad guy because ultimately they think that I'm supposed to be on code, even though I know and they know that it's not in our best interest, in my family's best interest, in the country's best interest. And when we continue to play identity politics, the thing that they usually refer to is our previous history in electing people in office that ultimately even they will concede that they didn't have our best interests at heart. And so when I'm interacting with these people, often at times it's very difficult for them to step outside of being on code in order to do the thing that's even in their best interest. So I'm often looked at as a bad guy, but in reality they know I'm telling the truth and that's why it's so difficult for them to be able to convey and then debate what it is that I'm telling them because they already know what the truth is. They're not, they're not unfamiliar with what it is that they experienced over the last three and right. a half years. They're suffering, they don't have no. jobs, they have lower wages, they can't pay their bills. Right. And so when they experience this, but it's very difficult for us as a community then break away from the popular thing to do because yeah. they don't want to be a part of the cool kids club anymore. And that's the problem, right? Uh, because the thing about it, all I can go back to is pretty much I always do this here. Uh, I look at my social media, right? And I see um, people are literally the people who generally have no care in the world about what actually, what's actually going on in the world, they don't care about the border, bro, at all. They see her, right? And she's saying that she's uh, identifying as a black woman. So then what happens? Black women then flock to her, right? And then what that means is uh, they're going to vote for her exclusively because of, the, of her saying that she's black. That's it. That's the reality. That's what happened with Obama, right? Literally. Okay? That's all you had to do is put her up there saying that she is what she is. And then there you go. Um, you can pretty much guarantee that the overwhelming majority of black American women are going to vote for her just off the strength of her being a black American saying that she's a black American woman. Well, Stacey, I, I have to say that that seems to sum it up. It's it's it is it's reflexive and it, it takes a lot of courage. You know that. Of course, Anton knows that I clerk for Justice Thomas. I mean, they're still beating him up all these years later. So. Yeah. It's it's a tough place to be, but it's factually the right place to be. So, Stacey, how do you handle this? And by the way, Kamala Harris behind in Georgia in the swing state poll average, I think by four points, five points, six points. Um, so mm -hmm. she's speaking in Atlanta. Uh, lots of Kamala signs behind her. One white dude behind her. I see him. Uh, Stacey, yeah. uh, thoughts on this? You know, Laura, I think Anton hit the nail on the head. This is about policy and no one, I don't care who you are, if you're a white woman, a, a black woman, it doesn't matter what your skin is. What matters is how do these policies impact you? How does 
the policy of open borders and giving jobs to foreigners instead of Americans impact your bottom line? How does the double-digit inflation, which stacks up month after month as cumulative, impact your bottom line? Can you still save money? Can you have, take, take a vacation? Can you buy that home? Can you upgrade? Can oh. you move out of a department into a house? Um, these are very real impacts. Anton described them well. And I think when, I'm, when, when I find people that only want me to address my life as if I get up every morning and say, what am I going to do today because I'm black? Um, they don't right. understand me. I'm a human being. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I'm just somebody's mom on the radio. I'm just somebody's mom on Laura Ingram tonight <laughs> for the first time. Thank you. Um, oh, but I'm sitting it. here listening to Anton. He makes sense. And, and yeah. what makes sense to me is what the policy is, you know? Well, okay. This, these are facts, okay? And into the image making of Kamala, even the New York Times today, and forgive me for not having the direct quote, but the New York Times today had to write a piece about Kamala's biographical transformation. And there was a piece about how her father, um, who's of Jamaican descent, uh, he was a Marxist economist at, at Stanford, socialist Marxist economist at Stanford, he's still alive, um, uh, very controversial, but you know he's a tenured professor uh, at Stanford University that she never really talked much about him, that he's kind of a, a footnote in her biography, but then she leans into it, Anton, and President Trump uh, spoke about this with me. She leans on into it, I guess, for her political benefit. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's exactly that what she does. politics is the play. When you don't have anything else to lean on, when right. you spent the majority of the time being absent, and then on top of that, you then advocated for being part of the alphabet community, which I call them, and then you failed at the border to the tune of the estimation of 10 to 15 million migrants coming into this country illegally. What else do you have to stand on? So then you start Nothing. to lean on the thing that even black people, honestly, when I'm having these conversations, black people don't even consider her a part of the cool kids club, but they have to lean on it in order to have something to even be able to hold on to instead of just saying, hey, listen, Trump is the best candidate. They wanna say that I wanna be a part of the Democratic Party. So they figure out a way to validate themselves to be a part of this movement, which is not even best for them. It's silly. Stacy, a friend of mine who- mm. uh, went Bro, well played. Yeah, yeah, he's saying all the, all the correct things. In fact, there is nothing that, there's nothing to gain from this party at all i don't see it not right now not anymore um maybe for a woman maybe exclusively i'd say uh but other than that i, I really don't see the benefit of joining a, a party that um that promotes all of the things that they promote specifically um uh, yeah i don't know guys it's not it's not for the 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 masses i'd say um, so I think this is going to be an issue go for, for this party going forward. But I do think that still, no matter what's being said here, um, black American women are not going to pay attention to the actual policies, large scale at least. They're still going to vote for her exclusively uh, because she's a woman and exclusively because um, she's calling herself black. Went to uh, law school with me, just messaged me. Uh, we were told from the beginning that they couldn't argue the issues. And they know that Trump is better on the economy, better on defending our interests, better on the border, stopping legal immigration. They won't, he won't drag us into war. So all they do is revert back to the childish games as, as we saw with the white dudes for Kamala. I mean, how pathetic is that? <laughs> it's almost like it's a, I, I thought actually a conservative must have made that. I thought that whole Zoom was created by a conservative because it was, <laughs> it was so repulsive. And but it was so funny. I think in one of the uh, people speaking, I think you know a lot of the mail-in ballots were were hidden. Um, but it, it's it's a very strange. They, they think that helps them. It doesn't. Yeah, they do. But I, I think doesn't. you know there are people in America whose incomes are such that these double-digit inflationary impacts don't don't really mean anything to them. They're right. insulated from the policy mm. decisions they make in the ballot box. But for most Americans, that's not the case. And mm. even if you are wealthy, if you care about your bottom line, if you're actually very frugal and and you pay attention to your money, you don't want to see double-digit inflation. You don't want to see America sending two hundred billion dollars to Ukraine. You don't want to see boots on the ground, our own children mm. spilling our blood and treasure abroad for something that we really have no interest interest in. And you really want to see some cogent domestic policy that prioritizes some of our very serious issues that we had, even coming out of the pandemic, homelessness, mental health crisis, um, health care. There are some things what, we need what, to do. I know, but Stacey, you're, you're dealing in the realm of facts. When you, when you actually see interviews, when people are pushed on this who are d refusing to think differently, they'll say stuff like, well, but he's not going to be good on equity 
right, Anton? <laughs> equity. He's going to disembowel <laughs> equity. When I say to folks, is how is equity? How how's all the equity of the last three and a half years worked out for your communities? Illegal immigrants it's, using your it's schools? It's absolutely horrible. It's absolutely <laughs> horrible, and it's and it's so funny because, you know, I've been seeing this whole movement right where. They first leverage sororities and fraternities as far as the Divine Nine to try to include them in order to try to get her to be uh, obviously presidential. Uh, I don't think that it's working because everybody no. that's in my community and the people that I speak with, especially black men, are even disappointed in white men in that why would you then follow white women who are extreme feminists and then let them follow black women in order to try to be a part of this cool kids club oh my God. when you can't stand on policy and you can't stand on real things that's going to help everyday Americans, especially those that are in these democratic hell holes that well, are suffering let me tell the you. most. It's insane. We gotta, stay well, that's a lot. That, that, that's a lot right there. Um, whew, yeah, listen, all... all as a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and let this video finish up. Anton, fantastic first appearances on the Ingram Angle. <laughs> Love having you on. And I'm going to try to get the man Guys. bun guy on the show. Okay, we'll see if he can actually <laughs> step into the ring. <laughs> I won't hold my breath. But the white dude uh, Zoom call will keep me laughing for a long time. Hey, Sean Han. All right, guys, listen. So here's the thing, personally, my opinion. Um, she has no policies. At least nothing that is relevant to me specifically at all, right? There's nothing. There's nothing there for me. Um, the things that I care about mainly, specifically, are, are taxes, inflation, um, and uh, making sure the border is not just completely open, right? Um, and people that are not, uh, you know, on all these watch lists are not also coming through the the border because it's wide open, right? Like there are a couple of things that are are standing out to me as uh, as things specifically that are important to me, but they seem not to be very important to Kamala Harris, right? Um, and all she really has to lean on is identity, right? And, and that's all that she's kind of bringing to the table. If you do specifically only want to uh, vote for her because she's a woman and uh, because she's because she calls herself black, then these are things that I guess that, you know, that's, that's for you. Do your thing. You, you don't care about this country, obviously, right? You're just trying to, to virtue signal for the most part here, guys. But either way, listen, guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think. I do think that, um, unfortunately, um, many people will vote for her exclusively because she says she, that she's black, right? And that she's a woman. There are two things that are happening here that um, are going to pull in a lot of people. And what and what Anton Daniel said here at the end is extremely, extremely valid, guys. Uh, I'm not going to repeat it, but it's extremely, extremely valid. Basically, every single thing he just said, guys. Yeah. But all right, listen, uh, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day thoroughly. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out.